Elgin's actually been a community water system to, since the mid-1880s. And at that time, Elgin pumped water out of the river and directly into people's houses. strictly pumped from the river into the houses. As a matter of fact, back in those times, they used hollowed out wooden, either wooden logs or uh, old wa wooden water pipe was like a railroad tie that was hollowed out that conveyed water. Uh, it was a great coup for communities that had water systems that were centrally located to a, a river where they could withdraw the water. But over time, as the community grew up, and consequently commercial, industrial, businesses, and waste also grew up along the river. That ended up going back into the river and therefore the water system became contaminated. So beginning in 1906, Elgin drilled a wells. And from 1906 to, I believe, 1974, Elgin drilled 11 wells. And we still have those 11 wells today, although we don't use them primary as our source, but we still have them and do use them regularly. As the community grew, they decided that there needed to be some other source looked at because they either needed to drill additional wells or they needed to look to a, an alternative source. And because drinking water treatment had come a long way since the early 1900s, they looked back to the river. This is the, the river intake structure. The actual intake structure, which are just coarse bar screens, that allow the water to flow into the wet wells in uh, the river intake. Um, right at that point, we uh, allow feed potassium permanganate to, uh, for taste and odor and to help zebra mussel control. Um, from there, we go to a finer automated bar screens that will catch the finer debris, such as leaves and so forth. From there we go, the water flows into the wet wells and we have six vertical turbine pumps. The operators will use those and adjust them. They want large amounts of water or smaller amounts of water. We have two pumps that are um, variable speed, so they can, they can fine tune those two pumps to get the exact flow they want. The water comes up a large diameter pipe into this basin where we add powdered activated carbon and we also add alum as a coagulant. And what we're trying to do is get the dirt and uh, impurities to stick together, create a precipitate which will settle to the bottom. This basin holds two million gallons of water. The water comes into the center. We have large mixers that mix the chemicals with the water. And then the, wa the basin is actually 27 feet deep. It's deeper at the center, it's kind of cone shaped, so all the precipitate is going to settle to the bottom where the it, the, the precipitate will actually be extracted off the bottom of the basin. The clean water then decants off the top. You can see here in the weirs around the outside of the basin. And then the water from this basin moves on to the second treatment process. This is our primary softening basin. Water comes from the first basin, which is our pre-sedimentation basin. The water comes up here. We add lime as our coagulant lime as in calcium carbonate and the calcium carbonate actually precipitates with the minerals that create hardness in water. So in Elgin we actually soften our water to a moderate level. This is our what we call secondary softening basin. We actually the water from the softening basin comes into the center here. We add a, another coagulant to make any uh, additional material that is suspended in the water stick together it's going to settle to the bottom and then the clean water decants off the top we also add fluoride to our water at this location we're at the final point of our treatment process we're in our filter gallery the water comes from the secondary basin out in the yard into the building underground piping 
the water is fed into these filters. We have eight filters that are 726 square feet. There's six feet of water before you actually get into the filter media. The filter media is sort of like a filter in a, like a fish tank or in a home filtration device. Interesting thing, as in a swimming pool filter, we have to backwash the filters. So approximately every 60 hours, we will shut off the influent and blow water backwards through the filter to clean them. We reclaim that water so the water is not wasted and we recycle it through our treatment process. On a day-to-day -day basis, we have certain things that we have to do. We keep track of uh, river flows, which I've got here. Uh, we keep track of our pumping. We have to maintain uh, certain pressures and certain tank levels in the system. Uh, we do with, uh, water samples four times a day. We do over 200 different analyses each day uh, on the water. Um, that's, we, that's an eight hour. In an eight hour, yeah, and in an eight hour shed. Every eight hours. So 200 samples that are repeated every eight hours. Every eight hours. So that would be three times a day. Um, I'm speaking for my shift, which is running from 7.30 to uh, 3.30. A lot of people do not know this, but we are one of the one of the departments, along with the fire and the police, that is a 24/7 operation, 365 days a year. We do not we do not leave this plant unmanned at any time. Uh, one of the things that we do on a regular basis is test the water. We test the water, the raw water in the river, as it flows past. We test the water throughout the treatment process and all the varying different steps, and we also test the finished water. The uh, chemistry side, we're doing quality control testing. Uh, we're checking the distribution system and we're also checking the water in the process of being made above and beyond what the operators do for their testing. Right now we're doing distribution testing behind me. They're checking the water all around the city for chlorine, turbidity, total hardness, calcium hardness, pH. I'll also be checking the water for total coliform bacteria and heterotrophic plate count. The microbiology side is state certified to do the bacteriological testing. The Water Quality Laboratory is also involved in uh, investigating water quality complaints around the town, hopefully finding a resolution for the people or at least explaining what the phenomenon is that they're observing. The big one right now is my water's cloudy as it comes out of the faucet. Is it safe to drink what's going on? It looks like milk. Actually, and this happens more frequently in the cold weather than uh, warm, but it can happen any time of the year, is that when your water's cloudy, if you take a, a glass of it through clear glass and watch it, it will clear from the bottom up. And what that is, is dissolved air in your water. The air that you breathe is actually dissolved in the water. And when it uh, is released from the pressure of the pipes and warms up in your house, the air cannot be dissolved in the water anymore and actually just fizzes out. We're also looking at educating people towards um, more effective uses of the resources. To improve efficiency, for example, some things that people can do would be to replace toilets with high efficiency toilets, high efficiency washing, clothes washers, so that without any change in behavior they're actually using less water, uh, doing what everybody needs to do throughout the day. So if people learn more responsible ways for, for watering their lawn or washing their cars or doing their dishes or flushing their toilets, not only is it good for the water system, it's also good for the homeowner.